Moon game. No. <laughs> YouTube, what's going on today, man? Listen. No. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. No. What's up, everybody? I'll get back to you. There comes a certain point in time when you have to pop the channel. All this morality that you've developed is good because it's good to treat other people good. It's good to treat other people the way you want to treat yourself. All the world has reasons for it. And the reason is that we're connected. What's up everybody, my name is Art and welcome to Clips Photography. Today what I'm going to be doing on my very first video here on YouTube is showing you a little walkthrough about a mini video that I did and hopefully you'll learn something along the way and maybe if I'm lucky you guys will share a couple comments, uh, a couple um, things that I can learn and, and grow and then we can you know create a little community or a journey together and um, we'll both be better at the end of all this. If you didn't know how to put multiple frame rates on a on a particular timeline, as this one is a 24 frame timeline, all you have to do is right click it, you can go up to modify and go to interpret footage. Click on this and you can assume that it's 23.976 if you have a 24 frame timeline. So if this was a video that was shot at 60 frames, it would show 59 point something right here. And we would click this little radio button and type in 23.976. A little piece of advice on this, if you're gonna be shooting audio, you need, you need to determine like your base frame rate that that video is gonna be in. So if people are talking and you're shooting at 60 frames and you intend to use that audio, your timeline is gonna to need to be 60 frames. And then if you have things shot in 24, you're gonna run into problems. So right now, all we have are um, a music track, which is a royalty free track that I got from Epidemic Sounds and some video footage which is the drone uh, above this is a um, is a graphic which is like a title um, this one here you know, I'll toggle it on and off it's like the cinematic bars are what people call it the widescreen bars and this is my little watermark or logo and then this is like a uh, anamorphic flare and I'll show you how to go ahead and throw those all together. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom out and click on that and you'll see right here these are the bars and that's all that that really is just two black lines you can make one inside here and we'll go over that one day but this is pretty much just a widescreen PNG that's overlaid over the top of the footage. On top of that widescreen bars my watermark down here on the right hand side so all you got to do is just drop a drop a png on here and then you can resize that and then you know you can use the position right here to put that in the corner all right so this anamorphic flare by itself it's actually a longer clip of this flare in this video that i only use a small portion of so all I did was I wanted that portion. You can drop, you can drag the whole thing from here into your video if that's what you so choose. And then you can chop it up and cut it inside there. Or you can do like what I did is just select the in and I mark the out section. And then I drag, then I drag it into the mix. So when you first drag something like this in here, without it altered, you're gonna get something like this. All right, so you see that the flare actually cuts my video out and is over top of it. So we need to fix that. Click on your image, go into effects control, and then here under blend mode, if it's hidden uh, under opacity, Show that there, go under blend mode from normal to screen. 
and now you'll see it laid over top of your video as an overlay. And then you can adjust the strength of it by choosing the opacity. And now we have a video with some music, with the title, widescreen bars, and a little watermark here in the corner. All right, so there's a there's a reason why I used this as more of like a transition from that first shot into the next one, and and one is because I like to use like light or lens flares or um, different things of movement rather than an actual like a transition. Um, I think there sometimes the transitions are a little heavy handed. And these ones are just not so obvious and they kind of fit with this whole like bridal shower wedding type of vibe. So this one is kind of cool because it's really, really bright. The title's there. And as the music builds into this little hi-hat sound, that's where everything is at its peak. And then it changes to the next clip. All right, so you see the, the aerial view. And right there, just some simple cuts that are on a specific point of the song. They're not just random chopped in there. Um, they're on this little piano type sound. So that's a built-in transition and those are up in video transitions. This one's particularly in dissolve and it's a dip to white. You can just drag this onto the edge of a video and you'll see it turn brown or in the middle of two clips and it'll do that in between the clips. Well, what's really important here is this effect and it's just this like stutter. So how this is accomplished is this is a third party um, glitch effect. That's pretty much just drag and drop type of a thing. So all you got to do is go into like your your um, like your libraries area and right click on an empty space. You can go to new item and this can be done anywhere um, in a bin or whatnot. Click new item or hover over new item and then you're going to go down to adjustment layer and you're just going to click OK. So the adjustment layer doesn't pop up here. It actually pops up here as like a clip and you can just drag that clip into your timeline and you'll see it's called an adjustment layer. So we're going to grab this stutter. And we're just going to drag and drop it onto this clip. Now you'll see as the adjustment layer is highlighted that over here, you'll see that effect transform stutter and you'll see some keyframes or some, uh, some action that's applied. Um, to that effect. So now that adjustment layer has an effect applied to it, if we let it play now, you'll see that it actually has that stutter effect. It's pretty quick, pretty easy. For those people that have ever worked in like in Photoshop and use adjustment layers, it affects everything that's below it. So what I mean by that is you're gonna want to make sure where it actually is in the stack of the layers so that way it only affects what you want it to affect. All right, so I'm gonna stop right there because I mean, that really doesn't seem like much, but I just wanna talk about purpose, right? So the reason I wanted to talk about this effect in particularly was it's a stock transition, right? It's just a it's just a video transition, it's a dip to white, and it's drug onto this. However, the length was important to me because as far as the music goes, there was this really um, heavy like bass sound that, that was the emphasis of the song and was the main part of this drop. So I wanted to make sure that this effect was held and sustained until that bass note came in and to me, it just created a more dramatic effect. So you can see like the reveal, it's white, white, white until that bass really comes in and then it unreveals it. 
all right so here's the next part for us this is um a pretty pretty big one that's what she said <laughs> it's a nested clip so again if this is this is like really basic um you know i'm sorry but i'm really i'm really basic and this is for the people that don't really know so what a nested clip is is kind of like a pre-rendered clip and you can apply certain things to it and then render it out and it'll have those effects or whatever you apply to it semi baked into it it is truly non-destructive um, so you can always go back but on the timeline it becomes nested as in almost like glued together now so i'm going to show you it's green because it's nested and you can double click on it and you'll see it actually pop up here on your timeline area this is my sequence and this is the nested sequence here so what i wanted to do was i wanted to increase the speed of this clip and i did just that i took the clip and you right click the clip and you click on speed and duration and you'll see that i've up my speed to 200 percent to speed that clip up two times so there's a little caveat to speeding up the clip is that you can't speed up a clip and use the um you can't use warp stabilization on that same clip if it's not nested when you apply warp stabilization it'll actually give you an error premiere will be like you can't use warp stabilization and a speed adjustment at the same time so the way to get around that if it's not such a horribly shaky clip or it's not really really long so you're going to see that warping on the edges if it's a short little burst clip like this you can get away with it when i brought it back to my timeline i went up to the video effects and under distort warp stabilization and threw warp stabilization on it and you can see that it's on this clip if you come over here to the effects controls and you'll see warp stabilization right here I'll go ahead and um, bring this up and you'll see that below this music track now is this section of audio and that's her little vocal sample all I had to do now was really duck the main volume of the music um, which I did here through a couple keyframes in the volume so you'll hear how this goes now
What's up everybody, my name is Art and welcome to Clips Photography on... <laughs> uh, Jesus, why is this gonna be so hard? <laughs> Treat other people good. 